Rodney Dion Carney, born April 15th, 1984. Today's feature is one of the more beautiful dunkers of his time and possibly of any era. The sport of basketball has always been made for the most athletic, whether you're fast, jump high, or have elite strength. But the guys that play above the rim has always brought the most as far as entertainment. The Kemps, Blake Griffins, Aaron Gordons, the power dunkers, but the finesse dunkers for me have always brought the beauty to leaping and I appreciate the guys like James White, Zach Levine, and a guy many people either forgot or don't know about, Rodney Carney. I've always enjoyed watching him jump as I think most that remember him revered his game for. A lovely dunker and an equally beautiful shooter with a quick release, nice elevation, and smooth route running and footwork that led him to those deadly shots. In college, he was one of the best players in his conference and in the NCAA as a whole as a junior and senior. He was taken in the first round right outside the lottery in the NBA draft and never really stuck with any of his four teams. Here's why. Salute to the ghetto child on IG for this request. It's your boy JC Stunner Growth. Ash, get him! You better fucking like it, subscribe! <laughs> Rodney Carney went to Northwest High School in Indiana, where he was the Indianapolis Star Player of the Year and a high jumper that cleared a personal best 6 foot 11. He wasn't recruited by many of the top schools in the nation and accepted an offer from the Memphis Tigers in 2002 to play for John Calipari. Carney stepped into a program that just lost one of college basketball's highest touted recruits ever in Dewan Wagner. A team that didn't make the tournament a year before and with the subtraction of Wagner and addition of Carney, they did, losing in the first round to Arizona State. By his junior year, he led the Tigers in scoring and was an all-conference player. They didn't make the NCAA tournament that year in the infamous Darius Washington Miss Free Throw game. Carney finished with just 5 points and 3 rebounds. Rodney was a lot better in his senior year, averaging 17 points and shot almost 40% from 3. He was named a Conference USA Player of the Year and led his team to the regional finals where they were eliminated by UCLA. Stunt number one, weird opportunities. Researching Rodney Carney, one thing that stood out to me was that it seemed he was always on a team that either had their stars already, had someone with his exact skill set, or a team that just didn't have the management in place to utilize what he brought to the table. After losing to UCLA, Carney was taken by the Chicago Bulls with the 16th pick and then immediately traded to the 76ers where they already had a superstar in Allen Iverson, a secondary star in Chris Webber, and a few players with abilities that were better, more suited for the team, or more experienced than Rodney. Kyle Korver, a young shooter in his third year that shot like Rodney did, only much better. Iguodala, who was the exact type of player Rodney was drafted to be, but with more star quality to him in his younger days. His offensive game was a lot better in that he could create his own shot off the dribble, post up, adequate at shooting the three, was just as athletic as Rodney, and in his second year so had more experience and more in line depth chart wise. At the time, Carney didn't possess any of those abilities outside of being pretty much a spot up or off the screen shooter. He wasn't known for his defense like Andre was and at 6'7 didn't rebound adequately enough for the small forward position at just two rebounds a game for his career. The Sixers even taking him in the draft was confusing seeing as though they already had a guy with his skill set and more in the aforementioned Andre Iguodala. The Sixers management thought it would be a great idea to draft a guy that could play opposite Andre and create situations where Iverson could throw lobs from either side. Basically, trying to recreate what the New Jersey Nets had in Vince Carter, Richard Jefferson, and Jason Kidd. It wasn't a bad idea, just the wrong pieces for the job. Iverson was still a superstar in the league in 06-07 and wasn't looking to pass the ball as much as Kidd did. Iguodala was a young player drafted to be a star, so was looking for his own at the time. And Carney, outside of jumping and catching alley-oops, wasn't the creator Jefferson was and was not a great defender either. 
So outside of shooting, which they had, and dunking, his skills were not needed. He averaged just three points up until the Sixers traded Iverson and Chris Webber, where he averaged nine points a game thereafter. He finished his rookie season at six points per game, which was scoring-wise his second best season. The Sixers traded him in 2008 to Minnesota, and again, fit was an issue. A team mixed with players they still believed in and wanted to give a real shot at being stars in Randy Foy, Al Jefferson, and Sebastian Telfair. And a young rookie Kevin Love who they thought highly of and wanted to give a real shot. He played one season in Minnesota, averaged a career-high seven points a game, and returned to Philly as a free agent for some reason where he faced almost the same problem, Andre Iguodala and the return of Allen Iverson. He averaged four points per game in his return. He played one season, then signed with Golden State, who I think was his best suited team because of his shooting ability and ability to run the wing with Steph and the Warriors style. Only thing was that at this point, Golden State wasn't yet who we think of them to be today. They were coached by a guy named Keith Smart, who went 36 and 46. Steph Curry was only in his second year, and they didn't have Klay Thompson or Draymond Green. Had he been there in today's era, he'd be a perfect fit. He would be waived by the Warriors months into his year, play two games for Memphis, sign with the Heat and New Orleans on separate occasions, but was waived from both months later, and it would be the last NBA opportunity Carney would see. For some reason, he fell into situations or chose situations he just didn't fit into, and I think it cost him his NBA longevity. Stunt number two, and then what? In basketball, at any level, there's a few things that are a dime a dozen. Point guards, players that can jump only, undersized players, talented players that don't work hard, and players that don't bring much else to the table outside of the one or two things they do well. To me, Rodney Carney was a player that while he ran the wing beautifully, I mean to the point if he was in a different era, on the right team like I mentioned earlier in today's Golden State, he'd be amazing. He also shot the ball well over his NBA career at times like his stint with Golden State. But at 6'7", caught right in the middle of a shooting guard and a small forward, you have to produce more in other ways important to those positions. You have to rebound more and play better defense if you're to play the three. You have to do the same things as a bigger two guard, but also be able to create for yourself or teammates. At just two rebounds a game for your career, 0.5 steals and 0.3 blocks, along with 0.4 assists, he didn't provide either of those things and it made him expendable. Stunt number three, if you take that away. If you take away Rodney Carney's leaping ability, what player are you left with? Even with the leaping, he didn't provide much outside of shooting and dunking, and it's not like he did those at elite levels either, respectfully. At 70% career free throw shooting, 33% from three, which isn't bad, just not elite. And the other deficiencies mentioned earlier, outside of playing the wing on breaks, it's hard to give him a real shot. But if a person like that is injured, then what is he to your team? Carney would suffer many minor knee injuries over his career, with a slightly serious one where he tore his meniscus late in his career that really slowed him down and put the question I asked earlier into real form. If you take that away, then what? By this time, he was in the D-League, had played all over the world, and wasn't half the player he once was. I do think had he not gotten injured and lost his athleticism, he would have lasted longer. All in all, Rodney Carney was a beautiful athlete that I grew up with and watching. He was special in certain areas, but for the reasons mentioned above, his NBA career didn't go the way it could have in different circumstances. He was last seen involved in the Big Three in 2019 with Richard Lewis and Larry Saunders. Salute to him on his future endeavors. I hope he's doing well, but for these reasons, his growth was stunted. It's your boy JC, stunted growth. In a mile. My athletic ability, that's probably my greatest asset right there, and it gives me ability to defend. Now I'm just as quick as about anybody, so. Oh, Lewis Williams. Oh my! Rodney Carney throwing it down from way back.